Listen, that's amazing. Ooh. Just seems this is like a little um, model of it. So, sort of cool stuff. Good morning, Lou. Good morning, Lou. Is the other way round? Do you want uh, to go back to front or be happy to go? Um, anyway, I'm going to encourage these two. And I'll tell them about the, or the whole pattern of things. If you want to join in, do. Okay, that sounds like a good idea. Where are you from? Um, near Salisbury. Right. So, uh, a bit of uh, ancient history should come easy to you. Um, yeah, just a little good bit. Morning. Good morning. Welcome. Hello. Thank you. Right. Um, so, this lady was looking at the back rooms there, which mm. are all the private rooms. Mm -hmm. And there was an upstairs. So that the next room there uh, has a, is a stairwell. He'll be going through it, but you've just got to imagine the upstairs here. Okay. But to have stairs in the middle of a house, it would have been quite significant upstairs, oh, not just yeah. attics and storerooms and things. Um, so we've got the ground plan here, and the floor, the walls you're seeing up there are the full height they ever were in stonework, oh, because right. the upper works was all half timbered. Yeah. If you're interested in construction, when you're up that corner, Look down that outer wall, and you'll see where the timber lay along the top of it, yeah. from which the rest would have been built up. Oh, All right. yeah, um, so, these are the public rooms, private rooms at the back, front door in the middle on that side. Mm -hmm. And so you came into this front corridor, which had access to all these major rooms. Um, the materials for the mosaic floors in this particular room are local, but the picture ones all come from Dorset, the stonework. And they would have imported um, the mosaicists, probably from Dorchester. Um, so the material here, we've got some examples, is broken tile mm -hmm. for the reds, and the white is local limestone. These bits of material come from the Purbeck range over the Swanage area. Mm -hmm. That's the black stuff, isn't That's, it? It's all the colours in the floors, but we haven't got pieces of the blue, for instance, which is rare, and so on. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway... There's a few examples. Um, you've come in over a side wall there. There was never a door at that mm. point. The only doors were front and back. Mm. Um, so let me tell you from the pictures how things develop. Down at the car park area, there was an Iron Age village um, from before the Romans arrived. It's been there from about 200 BC. And when the Romans in, arrived in 43 AD, mm. um, they used the people of the village to um, be the workforce for this villa as it developed. And it developed because the ships were coming into the harbour just at the bottom of the hill here, mm -hmm. not out in the bay. You know that, um, well, when you're up in the drum tower, look down the slope, the village of Yaveland is on the other side of some, some fields. That's where the harbour was. Uh -huh. Something like eight metres of water at high tide. So deep this, water angle. We're not local, so this is not Benbridge. You're not talking about Benbridge it's Harbour. It's Benbridge Harbour. Oh, it is Benbridge. But it's the, now reclaimed 770 acres of reclaimed land, which is the RSPB reserve. Wow. But, you know, it's all low-lying. It's actually below sea level. Mm -hmm. But in Roman times, the depth of water was something like eight metres. They mm -hmm. could bring in big ships and needed a lot of food from these people. Mm -hmm. So they became rich on the proceeds. So, Iron Age Village, this is the one we're in. So the path that came up from the car park passed marks in the grass, perhaps you noticed, of the first villa of 100 AD. Um, it's 40 metres long. It was quite substantial, even at the early phase, because, of course, that was within um, a few years, really, of the Romans arriving. They arrived 43, so about 100 build. But there may have been a predecessor to that with wooden foundations, and we never found it. Anyway... 
Um, 150 AD, they put up a bathhouse at this end of that complex. Um, sophisticated, hot, medium, and cold bar. Um, we excavated it, but there was nothing really to show, so we've actually covered it in again. As we have this building, which went up about 200 AD, and that one is 50 metres by 25. It's a big building. Great hall up the middle, we call it the banqueting hall. Family rooms around both sides, and they're quite big. This is belittling that picture. And a new bathhouse. Um, situated on top of a well which they filled in, they got on 24 metres and met running sand. Mm. And they simply filled it in with sacrifices, which and is why I'm running sand? What do you mean? Black gunge. Ah, okay. No yeah. water. Okay. Okay. Well, um, and I mention it because something in a, a showcase up there is going to show they actually put sacrifices down this well, presumably saying to the God of Wells, next time, please, a decent supply. <laughs> um, human and dogs mm. and so on. We're not sure that that's the case. It just could be that the person fell down yeah. and, um, or that they dumped uh, a body down there. Mm. So it's a guess anyway. So here we are, 200 AD for that, 250 for this one. And we show it on the scaffolding across the front there because the stone was so good, it was all stolen at the end of the Roman times. You can see from that corner a piece there how good the stone yeah. was. Mm. Nice pieces of cut stone, you see. And where from? And the quarry's just on the down here. Oh, just right. the local stone. Yeah, local stone. Oh, okay. um, and um, anyway, all we've got left are a few asymmetric pieces, all the funny shapes. They didn't seem to bother with. And a couple of very big ones, which I bet the carter wasn't prepared to pick up and put on the back of his cart. You know, all my back boss. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's that. Um, coming back to the picture now, um, I'm not going to tell you very much about this building because you're going to go around and see it for yourselves. But it had a short life. Um, only about 296, a major fire hit it, mm -hmm. and after that, the locals, needing still to produce food for the ships that were coming into the harbour here, basically built up a number of sheds on some of the foundations, and that's when they dug the pit at the end of the main corridor there, where they had a drying kiln for grain. The big room at the middle at the back over there had had underfloor heating. They took that out and were using the materials from the floor posts, you know, the pillars, um, for building. Mm -hmm. This room, which had had underfloor heating, they directed the smoke into the room on the smoking meat. I'll come through it again from the start. I'm on the end at the moment, nearly finished. Okay. Um, so, smoking meat was essential to send um, not fresh meat down to the ships, but either salted, which I think was going on but in that the building. Or well, the ships were coming in, they just needed uh, food. Uh, you, yes. you couldn't take fresh meat down. Okay. Well, you could for this week, but you know, yeah, not much yeah, good for next. Yeah. Um, yes, yes. Um, so that's what was going on at that stage, um, provisions of, for the ships. But in about 400 AD, the whole thing came to a sticky end because the Romans went away. No more ships coming in, and the whole place silted up eventually. Why did they leave? The Romans. Um, basically, the, um, the it's a very strong, long story, you do ask big questions. <laughs> <laughs> the empire was folding. Yes, yes, yes. it was coming mm. to an end, you know, the decline and so fall of the Roman Empire. they withdrew their for forces. And yes, 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 yes. Anyway, uh, it sorted up until in 1880, the depth of soil here was quite considerable, and nothing was known about this place. It completely disappeared, and so the local farmer he was trying to dig in the area of that room there and getting very frustrated by a hard layer that he couldn't get through and he was trying here and trying there and he made a terrible mess of the floor and only <laughs> eventually did he realise what he was up against and he was charging his friend sixpence rather the next morning to have a look at a piece of mosaic. But anyway, that began the whole process, the story of which is going to be told to you on the next panel. Okay. All right? But I'm here to answer questions. So if you want to know things, I'll try and come around and say, what do you want to know? This building has got mostly walls, but you said it was actually art timber above where it is now. It was all plastered over, and so... Oh, I see the timber was plastered. Yes, oh. yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Would they have used the bottle and daub? Yes, yes, yes. Um, they might have left some of the timbering unclear, but unless we knew the pattern of that timber, you know, whether it was all in, uh, you know, we didn't want to illustrate it, hmm. but basically it was plastered, all the walls here, inside and out. It looks good. <laughs> mm. Okay, likewise, if you want to know things, just ask. Will do. Thank you, Thank you very much. <laughs> yes, excellent. Thank you.
so I guess this is the... No, no. Ah, yeah, main entrance. That's the really quite amazing um, entrance hall. Ah, ah, that's the trench he was talking about. Just that little trench there. Not very big. I guess this could have been a lady's prep room. I hope this is recording. Bacchus there, the bottom in the middle, and then in the middle it looks gladiator, I think. Some Victorian in the hunter hat. Some more walls. This looks like maybe they had a, a celebration there. A few free drinks. And there's a cockerel. Yep. Largest ever found. It's incredibly well preserved. That is. I don't know if it's the real one. Where it's at, it's being preserved somewhere. It's quite big, I think. Yeah. 
I'm not surprised it took four people. Four people. That's wow. Huge. They're taking two people each. impressive. That's it. Jesus. See what the sign say.
from Jesus. Thank you so much for watching the winter.